Hey, I'm Sophie from Sophisticated Organization, and while it's not quite the holiday season yet, I wanna share with you my top tips how to get organized before the holidays so you can make it as seamless as possible. So if you guys are ready, let's get going, and I'm gonna show you all of the things that I like to do before the holidays. I don't know about you, but the end of the year feels like the busiest time of year for me and for my family. There's traveling, there's guests, there's events, there's gifts. It is so overwhelming. So before I forget to mention, I do have a printable available on my website that will cover a lot of the different things that I'm talking about today and will have a way for you to actually write it down, plan and get organized. But the first thing that's in that printable is a November and a December calendar. And it's so important to fill out your November and December plans so you have that stuff calendarized and you know what you are planning for and what to look forward to. So I am actually going to use my November and December planner and get to writing out some of the events that I know that we have, some things that I wanna get done as well on a little side to-do list. And then I think we should talk about gifts next. Let's be honest, one of the biggest stressors around the holiday season, at least for me, is the gift giving. So one thing that you can do to make it a little bit less stressful is to create a list of all of the people you need to purchase gifts for, as well as some gift ideas, whether they're general ideas or very specific ideas if you already know what you wanna get that person. That way you're gonna be able to go about your life and maybe think of different ideas and you'll know, oh yeah, I need to purchase my mother-in-law a gift. And as you see something, you could say that would be a great gift idea for her. Maybe I wanna purchase it right now or hold on to that idea, see if a sale comes around or it becomes discounted closer to the holidays and you can purchase it when it's on sale. You'll save a lot of money hopefully doing it this way, keeping that list of people and items so you can watch for different deals, maybe wait for black Friday, have that stuff in advance. It really will help and make it less stressful. The other thing that I will mention to help plan ahead for the holidays is to take advantage of those sales yourself. It doesn't have to be all about gifts. You can spoil yourself and your family a bit or don't even think about it as spoiling. I have already created a list of things that just in general our family would like to have or purchase and I've been holding off on those things that weren't actual necessities and things that I could wait for for a little bit to wait for some of these deals that may come around around the Black Friday season specifically. If you have small businesses you wanna support, you can always do that on Small Business Saturday and hopefully get some good deals there. I am gonna have a video for you guys on small businesses that are focused around organizing and cleaning. That would be great to support. Um, but I think it's a good idea to keep an eye out for deals yourself as well. And like I mentioned just a minute ago, keep an eye out for deals for people that you're already gonna purchase gifts for anyway. You need to get your gift wrapping supplies together, whether you have a gift wrapping station, maybe something that you slide under your bed, on the back of a door. I have been asked a few times the least organized place in my house, and I think it might be in this unit behind me, specifically where I keep wrapping paper, gift bags, all of the gift giving accessories and things like that. I haven't really organized it, so today, because we're getting ready for the holidays, I'm going to tackle it. I'll know what wrapping paper I have, and then it's just gonna be so much easier to find what I need and to also have that last very, very messy place in our house organized. So let's get going through it. Step one of any organizing project is to take everything out of your space. You wanna start with a blank slate so you can first of all evaluate what you have, but also evaluate how organizers are gonna fit in there and start fresh. So I am doing just that, pulling everything out of the top two drawers there because I'm gonna make that my gift wrap HQ. I had a lot of that crinkle gift wrap paper. So I'm putting that into two organizers just to get that out of the way and categorizing everything before I dive into the organizing. So I had some organza bags there, pulled them out of the organizer they were in, moved that to the side so I could continue pulling things out. I have a ribbon bin here. I'm dumping that out and 
I had a box with a whole load of other miscellaneous items. So I started going through that, grabbed an organizer just to kind of get started with. And I think that's where I'm gonna start is by getting together all of the little accessories I have. So gift tags, small gift bags, and using this organizer that wasn't being used. I have a few different organizers that just weren't being used. And I'm gonna try and get creative and use them for this project so I don't have to purchase anything new. I have lots of little treat bags, as I'm sure you can see, and gift tags for different holidays. I like making small gifts for friends and family. So those are the types of things that I am putting into this container, the little cellophane bags. And as I was organizing them, I decided that I did wanna take them out of their packaging just so they fit in there a little bit better and they're more uniform. I don't need the packaging. It's just one more thing that I'm gonna have to throw away in the future. And then I can continue to put all of the accessories in that smaller slot of the organizer and have all of the bags lay flat on top of each other. Then because that box opened up, I can still organize stuff inside of it. I put a larger gift bag in there and some small gift boxes I was thinking about putting in there. Again, just playing around with things as I go. I went back and forth with the holiday themed gift bags. If I was gonna put those with the rest of the gift bags or the treat bags, I decided to put them back with the treat bags. And since I felt like I had a handle on that, I moved on to the organza bags and put all of them together, organized them a bit more because they were kind of shoved in their organizer previously and added a few other ones that I came across when I was sorting through my gift bags. Now onto the ribbon here. I'm just gonna tidy up some of the strands a little bit and organize it within this organizer. And if you're wondering where these organizers came from that have the little dividers in it, it was actually a part of a larger organizer that was for gift wrap specifically that's perfect for sliding under the bed. And the larger part of it, my husband's using in our storage room, he's putting tools and stuff in there. And since I have the drawers of this unit, I don't really need it, but I'm still using the portion of it that was meant for accessories and ribbons. My parents also just got these two little gift wrap paper cutters. You can put them on top of your gift wrap to keep it from unraveling and keep them organized, but they also work to quickly slide through the wrapping paper and cut a straight line. I haven't used them before, but I've heard great things and I'm very excited to use them this holiday season. Now that pretty much everything is organized, I'm gonna clean off the floor space a bit by putting stuff back into the drawers. And this is where you play organizing Tetris, just moving stuff around and figuring out how it works best so you can find what you're looking for. It is a system that you can maintain, things flow and make sense together. So I had the bottom drawer there for a gift wrap and gift bags, a couple of those small finishing accessories, and then on top, all of the stuffing and tissue paper and other things like that, as well as a few things that we have on hand to give as gifts when in particular, somebody's gonna have a baby. And that quick and easy project makes me feel so much more prepared for the holidays. Regardless of what holiday you celebrate, the importance of the season is family and family gathering and spending quality time together. Our son is gonna be about a year around the holidays, so I'm really excited to be able to create special memories for him. And to do that, you kinda of have to do a little bit of planning ahead and thinking those things through. I am going to make a family bucket list of all of the things that I want to do, memories I wanna create, maybe traditions that I wanna start, because some of these are starting traditions. Jim and I, my husband, we're actually somewhat newly married. We've been married for um, like a couple of years now at this point, not quite three. So we're still figuring out 
our family tradition. So taking time to write out those bucket list items as well as doing some research because we're also new to the area. We just moved to Nebraska a little over a year ago. So finding things that are in our local area, events that we can go to and planning those things out, I think will make for a really special and magical holiday season and make it stress-free when we get to those moments because I've already planned it all ahead of time and have all of those wish list items ready to go. I'm gonna take a quick coffee break and I thought you should join me because I'm gonna make a holiday themed drink. It's not super cold out yet, so I'm gonna make an iced gingerbread latte. So I'm gonna show you how I do it. Either brew some coffee or you could do this with espresso. If you brew coffee and you have time, I would encourage you to refrigerate it overnight. I am then adding in some oat milk, a dash of cinnamon, some ginger, vanilla extract, a little bit of molasses there, and I'm also doing a splash of maple syrup. So I will list in the description box the recipe that I used as inspiration, but as you can tell, this was something I just eyeballed and it turned out delicious. So if you are looking to get in the spirit without a warm coffee drink, give this iced gingerbread latte a try. I'm so excited to pull those bins down and start to decorate for the holidays, but we are not quite there yet. So today I'm just gonna be pulling them down and taking a look inside my winter bins, figuring out what decor I have. I do feel like I'm pretty familiar with it. I got rid of some stuff when I moved to the house, but there are still some blank areas that I'm hoping we can get a few new items. And I think it's really important to go through and just remind yourself as to what you have because you don't wanna get drawn in by all of the stores starting to get a flood of Christmas and Hanukkah and holiday items and want to buy it all and realize you already have some of those things at home or you might not need it. It is so easy. I know it can be so tempting. So take this step, go through your decor, take a peek at what you have, and then create a game plan. I only have two main bins for winter decor. This smaller one is a lot of the smaller items, kind of makes sense. It's a little bit heavier. It has some breakable items in there, but beyond knowing what you have, it's kind of fun to go through this and get excited for the season. You'll see, I just pulled out some candles. Last year, I screwed that up for Hanukkah and purchased candles because I thought I didn't have them. So I had an extra set of candles. So now reviewing what I have in my bins, I'm reminded that I don't need to buy candles this year because I did last year and I had doubles. A lot of times during the holidays, people send out cards with their family photo. You might be sending out invites for events that you're hosting. Maybe you're sending thank you notes for gifts. There's just a lot of mail going in and out. So make sure you have a mail station set up. You have stamps ready to go. I have a customized return address stamp that I bought for ourselves. That makes it really easy to just stamp it instead of writing it every time. You could also print out some labels that have your return address just to expedite that process. Have thank you cards ready to go. If you are planning on sending a holiday card and you need to have photos taken of your family, get those scheduled or if you're going to take them yourself, plan those out. Plan out the outfits that you need for them. Make sure you have that all ready to go and get it done as far in advance as you possibly can just to make it a little bit easier for yourself. The next thing you need to do is to make a meal plan and plan out your recipes. So this is obviously very helpful if you plan to host an event at your house so you can think ahead of time and create that menu for whatever event or holiday you're hosting. Even if you're not planning on hosting this holiday season, maybe you're going over to a friend or family member's house or it's happening multiple times throughout the season so you wanna to start to pick out what things you might wanna bring or just in general, I think there are certain recipes that are more seasonal and fit better in the winter time. And I hate that feeling when I flip through my recipe binder or my recipe books and I get to a recipe like, shoot, that would have been so great to make around the holidays or that would have been better um, for late fall, early winter, whatever it might be. So I'm gonna go through my recipe binders, 
find some of those recipes that I wanna just in general make over the holiday season, as well as making a menu plan for um, one event that we're gonna host, and then starting to brainstorm some different recipes that I could bring to both Thanksgiving and to Christmas. So wish me luck. I'm gonna start going through it. I know there's a few gingerbread things um, that I have in my breakfast binder. I think there's a gingerbread cinnamon roll that I've been waiting to make forever. Um, and I've also pulled out my dessert binder and my appetizer and drink binder just because I'm gonna have a special focus on that. And then I'm gonna go grab my other one that has my main dishes, give a flip through my cookbooks. And then if you need more ideas, hop over to Pinterest, hop online, do whatever you need to do to find those recipes. You'll see off the bat, I found a Mexican hot chocolate. That's perfect for the holiday season. Also brie bites, that's a great appetizer. There were some cranberry bites there. I'm marking all of those things that will be great for holiday appetizers. I also have my mom's mashed potato recipe. That is a Thanksgiving must. Potato pancakes, perfect for Hanukkah. And then I also stumbled across this recipe that is a pesto bread that kind of looks like a wreath. So that might be a fun one to make. I've never actually tried that recipe before but you'll see I'm coming across so many different holiday themed dishes that I wanna mark. And it already feels like it's paying off that I'm doing this. Lots of cranberry things. And then in the breakfast section, there's that gingerbread cinnamon roll that I mentioned. And now I have my dessert binder, so I'm just gonna go through that as well and find some of my favorites. The holidays are a time when a lot of us have guests potentially coming over. I have my parents who are coming in town and they're gonna stay with us in our guest room. So something that I need to do to prepare is to prepare my guest room. Now I have this bowl I always keep in my guest room with little things that people might forget when they travel, like a toothbrush, a mini toothpaste, some medications like Tums, a makeup wipe, all toss chocolates in there and little snacks. I also have face masks, just little things to make it feel extra special when we have guests come visit. So I need to restock that. Maybe I'll put some peppermint or holiday themed treats in there or something like that. Make sure the bed is made and the sheets are freshly washed, towels are ready. I have everything that a guest might need, but beyond preparing your guest room, preparing your house in general for guests is a really great idea could involve a little bit of cleaning but making sure you have basic things ready like a spot to hang your guest coats it's winter time and in a lot of places that means snow and muck and dirt coming into your house so a spot for guests to maybe take their shoes off that won't destroy your floors, thinking through all of the different things that would be involved with guests coming over to your house, either for a meal or for an overnight stay will really help prepare you for the holiday season. I hope you're feeling excited for the holidays and relaxed and stress-free, like you can have a plan in place. Don't forget I have that printable available on my website if you are interested. If you liked today's video, please consider giving it a thumbs up so I know you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I'm gonna be decorating for the holidays, lots of different cooking, some of those recipes that I pulled out little flags on for, and you can join me for all of the other holiday content. So until next time, I will see you guys later.